Sisters and brothers, one of the biggest misstatements, misstatements in the world, world for people that say they're worshipers, and that is they call this the Jewish Passover. The last time I looked, it said it is the Lord's Passover. And this is a day, sisters and brothers, this is a day that anybody that calls themselves a Christian should observe this day. Because this is the day when the Lord delivered us from a death sentence. Not only just a physical death, the spiritual death, eternal death. And we're going to have a look at this because we need to understand that this Passover is the most important act among men when Jesus came and made it possible for you to get out from under the death sentence. Because Satan slew the whole creation in the Garden of Eden. And God was not going to allow Satan, one of his creations, to frustrate his plans. So he came himself and delivered us. But we're going to start this in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Because here in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, sisters and brothers, the Lord will tell you his whole plan. I mean, everything he's doing. If you understand this, you know what your God is doing. People make statements all the time, well, you know, the mysteries of, of, of the church or the mysteries of the gospel. There is no mystery. The only time something is mysterious is because you don't know about it. But the Lord is a thorough God, and he wants his servants to know how to serve him and to know what it takes to get salvation because this is what it's all about. This is what it's all about. So you talk, use the word Jewish Passover. Now you have taken the majority of the creation out of the most important observation among men when it comes to salvation. Now we're going to start this at 23, Leviticus 23, and we're going to see just who this Passover belonged to. 23 and 1, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, uh -huh. speaking to the children of Israel and saying to them, concerning the feast of the Lord. First thing, is the feast of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocation. Uh -huh. Even these are my feasts. Now these are holy gathering. This is what we're having right now. He said, these are my feasts. Go ahead and read. Six days shall work be done. Uh -huh. But the seventh day, the Sabbath of rest. Uh -huh. And holy convocation. Ye shall do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all your dwellings. That was the Sabbath day. That's the seventh day. But keep reading. Go ahead. These are the feasts of the Lord. Uh -huh. Even holy convocations. Go ahead. Which ye shall proclaim in their season. I haven't read yet where it said the feast of the Jews or the feast of the Israelites. Feast of the Lord. Go uh -huh. ahead and read. In the 14th day of the first month uh -huh. at even is the Lord's Passover. At the 14th day of the first month. What month? The month Abiel, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. Is the Lord's Passover. You notice it said, is the Lord's Passover. So you say that you serve in the Lord, 
then why is it that you're not keeping this? And let's show you how all this tie in. Let's go into Exodus, the 12th chapter. Because the Lord had all this written and nobody writes, nobody reads it, sisters and brothers. Nobody reads it. Out of all of the Lord's trouble, he's gone. To send his word and have it preached among men for every generation. And people come and all of a sudden they just totally ignore this Bible. And when you ignore the Bible, sisters and brothers, you have a rude awakening coming. Ignorance is no cloak to hide under. It's all that simple. Exodus 12 and verse 1. Exodus 12 and 1. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. Uh huh. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Go ahead. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, in the tenth day of this month, they shall take to them every man a lamb. Go ahead. According to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. So now, he said, look, everyone going to get them a lamb according to the house on the tenth day of the month. You have to do this if you're going to do it the old way. But go ahead and read. Three, four. Skip down to verse five and go ahead. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Uh-huh. You shall take it from the sheep. Or from the goats. Now your lamb have to be without blemish. Have to be perfect. Now you get some of my Hebrew brothers. They keep. They still. Keep, they still using the lamb. Instead of going to the bread and wine. Right. And I always tell them. You're doing it wrong. Because when we had the meat house. They used to come over and ask them. Well brother do you have some lamb? Yeah we have some lamb. Well you know we want to buy some for the Passover. Okay, I knew better, but then I was a businessman too, right? <laughs> so if I don't sell you the lamb, you're going to go down to Lamb Incorporated and buy from them. Yeah, you are. So I sold the lamb. I wanted them to say, but you know you're doing it wrong. Because what you have to do is they have to be a lamb of the first year without blemish. In other yes, words, sir. it got to be firstborn. How do you do that? You have to get you a female lamb. Then you got to keep her up. And the first male she have, you got to get this male, and you got to blemish him. Look, check for blemishes and make sure he don't have a flaw. Right. Then you have to put him up on the tenth day of the first month of the first month, which is Abraham. Keep him for the fourteenth day. Then you have to kill him in the evening. Then you have to get the blood and put over the doorpost. We're gonna read this. So I said, if you are going to do wrong. At least do wrong right. They can't even do wrong right. No, they can't. First thing is, when you get the lamb from the store, you don't know whether it's a male or female. Second thing is, you don't know how blemish it is. With some of the stuff I've been seeing on these cow killing programs, these animal killing programs, he might have been born with three legs. But once they skin him and put him on that cabinet, you don't know what you got. No, you Might don't. be a greyhound. <laughs> In other words, there is a way you have to do it. You have to do, if you're going to do wrong, learn how to do it right. See, my brothers listen. They always listen to me because they get on the internet and they lambast me. <laughs> but if you come to me, I'll teach you how to do wrong right. You got to put him up. Got to be the firstborn. Yes, sir. And he cannot have a blemish. He has to be perfect. Go ahead and read. Six. Ye shall keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. Uh-huh. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Go ahead. And they shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts and on the upper door posts of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So now once you kill this lamb, you got to get the blood and put it over the door posts and on the two side posts. I always say, you know, in fact, one of them even asked me, do you have any blood? <laughs> Only blood I had back there was chicken blood. Yeah. But even out, they were doing wrong, I wasn't going to mess with God <laughs> and give them no chicken blood. So I just said, no, I ain't got no blood. <laughs> but the whole thing is you have to put it over the door pole, sisters and brothers. Because that means something. Go ahead and read. And they shall eat the flesh in that night, uh -huh. roast with fire and unleavened bread, and with bitter herbs they shall eat it. Go ahead. Eat not of it raw, 
no sun at all with water, uh -huh. but roast with fire. His head with his legs and with the prudence thereof. Now you can't, you couldn't cut his head off. You couldn't cut his leg off. You couldn't even gut him. Right. You had to roast him whole so he couldn't break a bone in his body. So now, what you gonna do? You gonna put that blood on a doorpost? Why? Skip down to verse eleven. Verse eleven and go ahead. And thus shall ye eat it. With your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. Uh-huh. You shall eat it in haste. Go ahead. It is the Lord's Passover. Go ahead. For I will pass through the land of Egypt this night. Uh-huh. And will smite all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both man and beast. Go ahead. And against all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. Now, he said he's going to come through and he's going to kill the firstborn of everything in Egypt. From Pharaoh to the God is sleeping in the dungeon. Even the beast, he's going to kill the firstborn of everything in Egypt. But look what's going to deliver you. Go ahead and read. And the blood shall be to you for a token upon the house where ye are. Uh -huh. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. He didn't say, when I see the Israelite. No, no. When I see the clean or the dirty. Mm -mm. He said, when I see the blood. I will pass over that house. That's what the word Passover actually means, pass over. Because, sisters and brothers, if he was going to deliver us by our cleanliness, I doubt if anybody else would walk out. Maybe, maybe the arm baby in here might survive. <coughs> Therefore, we have to hide under the blood, sisters and brothers, because ain't nobody perfect. Go ahead and read. 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial. Uh huh. And ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. And ye shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. <coughs> now, you don't have a person call on the phone, so you had somebody told them, other Israelite, say, look, you should keep it a feast in Jerusalem. This said, throughout your generation, in all your dwellers. This, this what we, didn't, isn't that what we just read now? Somebody dwells. Everybody in here dwells somewhere, right? Yes, sir. And you're a part of somebody's generation, ain't it? Yes, sir. So if you're a part of somebody's generation and you dwell somewhere, then you're supposed to keep this feast. Said nothing about Jerusalem, did nope. Don't you know the Lord knew that he was going to scatter Israel all over the world? Mm -hmm. Then he chose us to be the priest. That means we're supposed to teach everybody all over the world. And if we're going to teach everybody all over the world, the whole world cannot pack into Jerusalem. Right. That's why I say, in all your generation and in all your dwelling. Right. For the people that's supposed to be priests, sometimes we put it down. I'm going to tell you the truth. Right. So let's go and show you what this is pointing to. Remember, it is the blood that saved you. What? Yes, sir. Because there was a pointing toward Jesus, the one that most Israelites kick on. Let's go into Matthew, the 26th chapter, and have a look at it. Matthew, chapter 26. <coughs> Excuse me. Because, sisters and brothers, when it comes to just Old Testament by itself, you will never know the meaning of it. And when you come to the New Testament by itself, you will never know the meaning of the Word of God. That's why the Lord said the law and the testimony. The law and the testimony, if they speak not according to them, there is no light, which means truth, in them. You have to use both of these books, sisters and brothers, so you can get some understanding. Matthew 26, Matthew 26, and we're going to start reading at verse 1. Because you're supposed to learn how to do this. You didn't come here to have a good time, a good feeling. You came here to learn how to save yourself. Right. That is your only real reason for being here. Matthew 26 and 1. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass when Jesus had finished all these sayings, he said unto his disciples, uh -huh. You know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Go ahead. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Now he knew the day that he's going to be crucified because he set the prophecy in order. Mm -hmm. Now after two days, he said, is the feast of the Passover. Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified because Passover is a feast, sisters and brothers. Skip right on down to verse 17. Verse 17. And go ahead. Now the first day of the feast of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus, saying unto him, Well, wilt thou 
that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover. Now, a lot of people read this. That's why I'm doing a lot of explaining, sister and brother, because a lot of people read this, and they say, that, look, you know, well, the Passover and the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread is the same day. No, it's not. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter, keeps it in all. It said the 14th day of the month is the Passover. The 15th is the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Yes, sir. Why it is written like this, I don't know. But when you have knowledge, you know that this, the, the Passover is not the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Right. Because it said, why is it that we will keep the Passover? And what did the Lord answer them? Go ahead and read. And he said, Going to the city of such a man and saying to him, uh -huh. the master said, my time is at hand, and I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Go ahead. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. And they made ready the Passover, not the Last Supper, not mm -hmm. communion, the Passover. Go ahead and read. Now when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. Now he sat down with his twelve, and let's skip down to verse 26 and see that he's going to change the ordinance of it. But not the meaning. Verse 26. Go ahead and read. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and uh -huh. broke it. Uh -huh. And gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. Now he took the bread and he broke it because they had the whole array there, lamb and everything. Mm -hmm. But Jesus changed the ordinance of it. He took bread and said, take this and break it, eat it. This represents my body. Go ahead and read. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, Drink ye all of it. Uh-huh. But this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. Now, he said, this blood, this wine represent my blood. This is a new covenant. Testament means covenant, sisters and brothers, which is shed for the remission of sin. Go ahead and read. But I say unto you, I will not drink thenceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Now, Jesus is letting you know. He is not going to have the Passover. He's not going to deal with the Passover no more until he drank it anew in his father's kingdom. And another lesson we'll show you why he made that statement. Because sisters and brothers, as long as there's a generation, somebody has some sin that need to be passed over. Right. And as long as you're passing it over, it is not complete. Right. The Lord is going to have this one more time when it's complete and it will not be complete until he do it anew in his father's kingdom. Now you look at him changing the custom. Why did he change the custom? Because he's finna change the priesthood. So that when Jesus broke out the bread and the wine, he didn't break out something brand new, new like people think. He broke out something real old because he was getting ready to pick up his old priesthood again. Let me show you he broke out something real old. Let's go into Genesis, the 14th chapter. Genesis chapter 14. That's why I held a brother one time where, you know, the, the prophets didn't do nothing with the bread and wine. I said, yeah, but somebody older than the prophet did something with it. Because sisters and brothers, there ain't nothing new under the sun. You just have to find that out by searching and studying and researching. Because you have a lot of lazy people that's trying to stand in the gap for the Lord. Look, if you're going to deal with the word of God, you have to find out what it is. Because the Lord is not going to send no voice in your head and teach you. <laughs> That's why I had it written in the book. And people stand and ministers stand before and say, well, the Holy Ghost just spoke to me. They should ask, why didn't we hear? We all in the room. You got a microphone, he spoke to you. At least it should have come through the microphone. <laughs> right. In other words, it's time ch children time play child's play is over with. Fourteen and one, Genesis fourteen and one. This is the time of Sodom and Gomorrah. Go ahead and read. And it came to pass in the days of Amraphel, king of Shinar, Arioch, king of Eleazar, Chelamar, king of Elam, and Tidal, king of nations. Uh huh. That these may that these may war with Bera, king of Sodom. And with Bersha, king of Gomorrah, Shenab, king of Admah, and Shabar, king of Zebion, and the king of Bela, which is Zoar. Now you got some kings. These things came, a group of kings came down and, and made war with Sodom and Gomorrah and their allies. And Sodom and Gomorrah lost. Skip down to verse 10. They lost the battle. 
because these guys, they were paying tribute to this king, and they stopped paying tribute, so he brought, came down with a bunch of other kings, and they sacked Solomon and Gamaliel. They mm -hmm. went to war with him. Verse 10, go ahead. And the vale of Siddim was full of slime pits, and the king of Sodom and Gomorrah fled and fell there, and they that rem remained fled to the mountain. So they lost, and they ran. Go ahead and read. And they took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah. That's what these kings do. They took all the goods of Sodom and Gomorrah. Go ahead and read. And all their victuals and went their way. Uh-huh. And they took Lot, Abraham's brother's son, uh -huh. who dwelt in Sodom, and his goods and departed. Now see, Ab so Lot, Abraham's nephew, went out into Sodom and Gomorrah. And when they took Lot, that was their mistake. If they had left Lot, they'd have got away with it. Yeah, they would. But they took Lot. And then somebody went and told Abraham. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And there came one that had escaped and told Abram the Hebrew. The Lord had not changed his name. But they went and they told Abram the Hebrew. People all well, you ain't no Hebrew. Hebrew is a language. The Bible said he called Abram the Hebrew. Yeah, he did. It didn't say he called Abram the Hebrew speaker, no, did it? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I'm saying this, sister and brother, because sooner or later they're gonna, you're going to run into it. They're going to bring it to you. So they took Abram. They went and told Abram the Hebrew. He hadn't changed his name to Abraham yet. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. For he dwelt in the plain of Mamre, the Amorite, brother Eshkol, and brother Aner. And these were confederate with Abram. Uh-huh. And when Abram heard that his brother was taken captive, he armed his trained servants, born in his own house, 318 and pursued them into Dan. Now, 318 so, uh, uh, servants couldn't have been as many as all them soldiers, but Abram had an ace in the hole, right. the God of Israel. Yes, sir. He is your secret hand when you serve him. Right. So they pursued him. Go ahead and read. And he divided himself against them, he and his servants by night, and smote them, and uh -huh. pursued them into Hobah, which is on the left hand of Damascus. And he brought back all the goods and also brought again his brother Lot and his goods and the women also and the people. So Abram recovered everything that these kings had because the kings saw him come and they ran. Go ahead and read. And the king of Sodom went out to meet him after his return from the Sodom of uh -huh. and of the kings that were with him at the valley of Shevi, which is the king's dead. So now the king of Sodom and all the other kings went out and met Abram. In the valley, in the Kingsdale, I guess where they hang out at. Right. But then another king showed up. Go ahead and read. And Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought forth bread and wine. Oh, this was another king. Melchizedek, he was the king of Salem. He brought forth bread and wine. Right. He should have came and killed a fatted calf. And two, three thousand sheep. He only brought forth bread and wine. Who was this guy? Go ahead and read. And he was the priest of the Most High God. And he was the priest of the Most High God. They hadn't seen this guy before. But go mm -hmm. ahead and read. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abram of the Most High God, possessor of heaven and earth. Uh-huh. And he blessed, and blessed be the Most High God, which have delivered thine enemies into thine hand. And he gave him tithes of all. Now, and also, that's when tithes were put on the table. But the whole thing, sisters and brothers, this guy... Melchizedek, the king of the priest of the most high God, we need to have a look at this guy. Right. Because I had the footnotes in one of my old Bibles. They said this was a Gentile king. <laughs> Let's see who he was looking at. Let's go into Hebrews, the seventh chapter. We're going to investigate this guy a little bit. Hebrews chapter seven. Every time you leave it up to interpretation, it is wrong all the time. You know why? Because you cannot interpret the mind of a being that created the very air that you breathe, which you have never seen in your life. So if you can't see the air that you breathe and you know you got to have it, how can he create something so important and, so, and something so invisible? So you can't interpret this guy. Let's have a look at him. Hebrews 7 and verse 1. Hebrews 7 and 1. Okay, read it. For this Melchizedek, king of Salem, priest of the Most High God, who met Abraham returning from the slaughter of the kings and blessed him. So who, we know we talk about the same one, don't it? Yeah, we Because in the meantime, the Lord called his name Abraham because he said, you're going to be the father of many nations. 
In fact, he told Abraham, he's the father of the faithful. So he met Abraham and blessed him. Go ahead and read. To whom also Abraham gave a tenth part of all. Uh-huh. First being in, by the, interpretation king of righteousness. Is God the king of righteousness? Go ahead. And after that also king of Salem. King of Salem. Go ahead. Which is king of peace. How many kings of righteousness and kings of peace can you have? But let's look at the properties of this guy. Go ahead and read. Without father. Without father. Without mother. Without mother. Without descent. Without descent. Having neither beginning of days nor end of life. Well, this guy here, what's up, man? Yeah, Go yeah. ahead and read. But made like unto the Son of God, abideth the priest continually. Now, this couldn't be no Gentile priest, king, because <laughs> Gentile's father is Japheth. Yes, sir. Japheth came out of Noah. Yeah. But what did this guy bring? He brought bread and wine, didn't he? Yeah. Go ahead and read. Now consider how great this man was. Uh-huh. And to whom even the patriarch Abraham gave the tenth of the spoils. So Abraham paid tithes to him, gave him a tenth of everything that he had gotten from these people. Skip down to verse 9. So we're going to pursue it a little further. Verse 9, and go ahead. And as I may so say, Levi also who received a tithes paid tithes in Abraham. How did that happen? Go ahead. But he was yet in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. Okay, now Levi hadn't even been born. In no. fact, Levi's daddy hadn't been born. Right. <laughs> so when Abraham paid 10% of his father, he paid 10% of everybody that came out of him in every generation. Because he set the bar, sisters and brothers. And he prayed it for the priest of most high God. Mm -hmm. People say, well, you, you shouldn't pay tithe. Ain't no Levite. Yeah. Well, what about Melchizedek? He's still there. Right. And you're going to know that he's still there. But this is something that the Lord requires. Go ahead and read. 11. And therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law. What further need was there that another priest should arise out of the order of Melchizedek Go ahead. and not be called out of the order of Aaron? So now this priesthood that the Lord set up, the Levit Levitical priesthood, if it had been perfect, you would not, not have need another priesthood. Right. All you had to do was get him out of Aaron. Aaron's son born, and righteousness would have continued down to the last day. But he found a flaw in this priesthood. So now he brought him another priesthood on deck. Go ahead and read. For the priesthood being changed, there is made of necessity a change also of the law. What law is this? The law of the priesthood. Yes, sir. You understand what I'm saying? There was two laws that were, were placed here. Sacrificial law and the law of the priesthood. You could not be a priest even if you was a Levite. You had to come out of the lineage of Aaron to be a priest. Anybody couldn't be a priest. That was the law. Right. And it's written, if anybody, they call them a stranger. That's among Israel. Come up and try and take it the man of a priest. They would be stoned to death. So this is the law the first, there was two laws. This is one of the laws that changed. One was the law of the priesthood, and the other one was the animal sacrifice. Skip down to verse 14. Verse 14, and go ahead. For well, it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah, uh -huh. of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. See, Jesus came through the tribe of Judah, and a Jew could not be a priest, only a Levite, and only the son of Aaron. So the law had to be changed for Jesus to become a priest right. coming out of the tribe of Judah. Go ahead and read. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek, there arises another priest. Go ahead. Who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment, but after the power of an endless life. It have to be endless if you ain't got no beginning, no end, right? Mm -hmm. So... Levi, they died, sisters and brothers. Yeah, they did. And let me tell you something. If you didn't die, could nobody replace you as priest? Mm -mm. Go ahead and read. 17. For he testified, thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Now, he is talking to Jesus, sisters and brothers. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Skip down to verse 21. Verse 21. And go ahead. But those priests were made without an oath. Go ahead. But this with an oath by him that said unto him, The Lord swear and would not repent. Thou art a priest forever 
out of the order of Melchizedek. So the Lord didn't swear when it come to Aaron, but he swore to this guy. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Go ahead and read. By so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament. So we know we're talking Jesus here, aren't we? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And they truly were made many priests uh -huh. because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. So now that's why there were many priests among the Levites because they died, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. That's the only way you can replace a priest. That's why people don't understand. You get the guy over there. I say the Catholic religion, it is built on the order of the Levitical priesthood. Most people don't understand that. So that's why you get the, get the Pope. He old. I got the last one. I remember he got so he didn't know where he was half of the time. And I saw one time, the one about two Popes ago, he was trying to make a speech. They had him in St. Peter's Square up there. They got him talking. And I see the agony on his face because he couldn't hardly talk. So he had to continue until he died. This was the last one. I think we had a couple of them that retired. They broke the order of Melchizedek. You cannot retire from the priesthood. You got to die out of it. So he said these Levitical priesthood was many by reason of death. That's why it was many of them. Go ahead and read. But this man, because he continues ever have an unchangeable priesthood. See what it says here? Because he continued ever have an unchangeable priesthood. When you understand this, sisters and brothers, you understand all the religions and what they do and where they got it from. I mean all of it. With the incense, with the coming up and ringing of the bell. The priest had to have bells on his garment because the Lord said, don't sneak up on me or I'll kill you. <laughs> well, he didn't quite say it like that. <laughs> but you know how Israel is, it has to be a little dramatic. But the whole thing, we understand everything they do. You understand it? Right. Go ahead and read what verse? 25. Uh-huh. Well, for he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. So now Jesus is able to save people from all over the world and in every generation because he Live forever. He was the priest after the order of Melchizedek. So now, Melchizedek, he said, without mother, without father, without beginning of days or end of life, abide the priest forever. So how can Jesus replace Melchizedek then? Because he is Melchizedek. Yes, sir. This is what people don't understand. They don't understand. So now, before he came, and die, become flesh and blood and die, he already knew that he, he said, look, I lay down my life and pick it up. If you can lay down your life and pick it up, that's some head that we don't see, don't we? But before he came, became the Christ, or came in the flesh, he was already told what he was going to do. Because that's what Paul quoted here. He said, by an oath, he was made a priest. And you shall be a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Let's go and see where he made this statement. Let's go in the 110th chapter of Psalm. John, Psalm 110. But why don't you put your marker here in Hebrews, because we're coming right back to Hebrews. Psalm 110. Because this word is airtight, sisters and brothers. The reason is all over the place because nobody bothered to teach it. They should not have so many different denominations reading the same book. You can read any novel and pass it around to everybody and they'll tell the same story. But when it comes to the Bible, everybody has a new story. Now, 110 chapter Psalm, and look what David wrote concerning the Lord and the Lord. 110 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. The Lord said unto my Lord, uh -huh. sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. This was not fulfilled until he rose from the dead. But look what else he said to him. Skip down and read verse 4. Verse 4, go ahead. The Lord hath sworn uh -huh. and would not repent. He has sworn and would not change his mind. Go ahead. Thou art a priest.
priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. Thou art a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. So the Lord told him that even before he came. The father told Jesus that before he even came in the flesh. He was, his name wasn't Jesus then. He had a lot of names. Melchizedek was one of them. But another name he had was Yahweh uh, Jehovah. Yep. Most people think that that was the God of the Old Testament. That was the Father. You ain't never dealt with the Father. So he said, you are a priest forever after the order of Melchizedek. When did he become that priest? At the resurrection, sisters and brothers. Well, let's go back to Hebrews. I told you to hold that, didn't I? But this time, let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Because this man that was under animal sacrifice and under the law that could not do him no good, sisters and brothers. It was just something to uh, kind of keep you in check until the Lord came and made the real sacrifice. And I'm going to show you this. This is the law, sisters and brothers, that was added because of sin, and this is the law that was taken off the table when Jesus came and died. Ten and one. Go ahead and read. For the law having a shadow of good things to come. See how they started out? For the law having a shadow of good things to come. They think this is the, animal, this is the Ten Commandments. Right. But keep reading. Go ahead and read. And not the very image of the thing. Uh-huh. Can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the commas there unto perfect. So this law could not make the commas there unto perfect. You know what perfection is? It's God, sister and brother. That's when they told Jesus, going to threaten him, that you better leave. Because, you know, uh, uh, Herod is going to kill you. He said, I want you to tell old fo that old fox. Right. <laughs> the day I heal the sick, tomorrow I, I preach the gospel and raise the dead, and on the third day I will be made perfect. Yes, sir. And he did when he come out that ground on the third day. He was God. And the reason I know you can only be perfect as you are, if you are God, because when the rich man called Jesus, good master, he said, why callest thou me good? That's what he said. And but one good, that's God. But he wasn't God then. He was man. He called himself the son of man. Right. So now, this law could not make the commas there perfect. This animal sacrifice. Why? Skip down to verse five, 4. Verse 4. Verse 4 and read it. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and a goat should take away sin. That's why it could not make make anybody perfect because it was not possible for the blood of bulls and goats to take away sin. You could have sacrificed every animal on the planet. But the animal didn't commit sin. Man committed sin. Right. So being that the blood of bulls and goats could not take away sin and Jesus was God and could not die, he needed something that could die. So look what happened to him. Verse 5. Go ahead and read. Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offerings thou wouldest not, uh -huh. but a body has thou prepared me. Oh, so when he came into the world, he said, sacrifices, animal killing. You didn't like that. So what he did, he said, a body thou hast prepared me. What did he need with a body? Right. But we're going to show you that for a minute. But keep your marker here. And let's back right on back up, sister and brother, because we're going to just throw a few onions in the pot and make this soup good. <laughs> <laughs> because he needed a body and let's see how he took on this body keep your marker here and let's back right on up to Hebrews the second chapter Hebrews chapter 2 because the words just like good jazz sisters and brothers you have to put some real instruments in it that's why I don't look at what you call I don't listen to this modern jazz it sounds like elevator music to me. So you have to put some ingredients in it. Hebrews 2, and let's start at verse 9. Hebrews 2 and 9, and pay attention to what you read here. Go ahead and read it. But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels for the suffering of death. For what? For the suffering, for the suffering of, death. of death. He had to be. You can't kill angels. No, you can't. That same Satan that was in the Garden of Eden. That's the same one going to be thrown in the lake of fire prior to the white throne judgment. Mm -hmm. He said, 
He was made a little lord in the angels for the suffering of death. Go ahead and read. Crowned with glory and honor. Uh huh. That he, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. So he had to be able to die for every man. That's why I say, a body thou hast prepared me. Go ahead and read. For it became him for whom are all things. Pay attention. For it became him for whom are all things. Go ahead. And by whom are all things. And by whom are all things. When it said by whom are all things, did that tell you who made all things? Yes, sir. He did. Go ahead and read. In bringing many sons into glory to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Go ahead. For both he that sacrifices and they who are sacrificed. For both he that sanctifies. I bet if you read, your reader did that last week, you fine, wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. Okay, then. For both he that sanctified. For, for uh, both he that sanctified. Uh-huh. And then. <laughs> Sorry about that, brother. Go ahead and read. And they who are sanctified are all of one. Uh-huh. For which cause he is not ashamed to call them brethren. Now, he said, those that are sanctified are the ones that do the sanctified are one. Jesus and the Father got together, and they had a project that they was putting together, sisters and brothers. And everybody's going to end up being the same thing. But skip down to verse 14, and look what it says here. Verse 14, read it. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same. Now, look what he said. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also took part of the same. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That through death he might destroy him that have, have the power of death, that is, the devil. Now look, sisters and brothers, if he took part of the same, what does that tell you? That he was around it. Mm -hmm. Sacrificing all and often he told the father, you didn't lie. So you prepared me a body. Then right. when I did, I stepped off in it. Angel took that body and planted it into the woman. Mm. I went to full nine months. But whose seed did he take off? Skip down to verse 16. Verse 16 and read. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels. But he took on him the seed of Abraham. But he didn't take on the nature of angels. He took on him the seed of Abraham. In other words, he came down through the lineage of Abraham. So Jesus was around. Yeah, he was. He saw killing animals. He knew killing animals wouldn't help. So what he did, he said, I got to die for these people. Because Isaiah tell you, he looked all over the earth. And he couldn't find one man that was clean enough to stand in the gap. Not one. So he had to do it himself. So now he came to die. And he took on him the seed of Abraham. Now let's go back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Because now when he took up on that seed of Abraham, he had him a body. Let's see what he's going to do with this body. Hebrews 10, and we're going to start reading at verse 8. 10 and 8. Go ahead. Above when he said, sacrifice and offerings and burnt offerings and offerings for sin, thou wouldest not, uh -huh. neither had its pleasure therein, Go ahead. which are offered by the law. Which are offered by the law. What law? The law of, all, law of animal sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. What is he going to take away? That's the first covenant. That he might establish the seventh co second covenant. Go ahead. By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Now that's what sanctify us. Because he needed a body that could be killed, sisters and brothers. So he became the sin offering. That lamb that we read about in the 12th chapter of Exodus represented him, sisters and brothers. That's why they couldn't break a bone in it. So now, he said, but I come to do your will. He said, the scripture speaks about him. He said, I come in the volume of the book. Let's go and pick up at least one of them. 
Let's go into Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. That's why I say that anybody that did not recognize who Jesus was, they don't know, they don't even know the Old Testament. It's one thing I found out about the Old Testament scholars, they're not very scholarly. And same thing about the New Testament Christian. They're not very Christian. Because what you attribute to Christianity have nothing to do with Christ. These things, sisters and brothers, somebody need to take note of. Isaiah 53, we're going to start reading at verse 1. Isaiah 53 and verse 1. Because we're going to pursue this guy. 53 and 1. Okay, go ahead. Who have believed our report. Uh-huh. And in whom is the arm of the Lord revealed. Not many, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. He shall grow up before him as a tender plant. Uh-huh. And as a root out of a dry ground. He have no form, no comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. Go ahead. He is despised and rejected of men. Uh-huh. A man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. Uh-huh. And we hid as it were our faces from him. Uh-huh. He was despised and we esteemed him not. No, he said, no, no. It can't be Christ because everybody loved Christ. They wouldn't love him if he come in here with a beard, sandals, and tell you, you can't eat that pig, you can't eat that catfish. Sunday is pagan. Your mama that you talk to every night, I don't know why you're wasting your breath. She is in the ground. She ain't going to come out until the first resurrection. What? Somebody in heaven? Ain't nobody in heaven. The only one that said he's going to go to heaven is Satan the devil. All of a sudden, they would hate him too. So he was despised and rejected by men, and he still is because they lying on him. Go ahead and read. Surely he have borne our grief. Surely he have borne our grief. And carried our sorrow. Uh-huh. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten to God and afflicted. Go ahead. But he was wounded for our transgressions. So he was wounded for our transgressions. Go ahead. He was bruised for our iniquity. Uh-huh. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Uh-huh. And with his stripes, we are healed. Is this talking about Isaiah here? No, no. No, no. That's talking Jesus, sister. And yes, sir. With his stripes, we are healed. He is wounded because of our sin. Because he didn't commit one sin. Mm -mm. Go ahead and read. All we like sheep have gone astray. How many have gone astray? All. That's mean that he had to save everybody, didn't he? All yeah. we like sheep have gone astray. Go ahead and read. We have turned everyone to his own way. Uh-huh. And the Lord have laid on him the iniquity of us all. Now, we all have turned our own way. We serve God on our own banner. Yeah. But when we decide to do it right, if this guy had not come and died for us, we would have died in our sin. He said, but on him, on him have been laid the iniquity which is sin of us all. Skip down to verse 10. Verse 10 and go ahead. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. But it pleased the Lord to bruise him. The Lord is the one that did this because he had to save his creation. Go ahead and read. He hath put him to grief. Uh-huh. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. When thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. But in Hebrews, the 10th chapter, he said that he made his body an offering for sin. Right. Now, which one did he offer? The body or the soul? It's one the same. Because the body is the soul. Nobody even read that in the second chapter of Genesis. When he said, the Lord God formed man out of dust of the ground and breathed into his nostril the breath of life and man became a living soul. Paul tell you in first Corinthians the 15th chapter that the first man Adam was made a living soul. So when he made his offering, his soul an offering, he made his body an offering. Yes, sir. Go ahead and read. Middle of 10. He shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Uh-huh. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Now he's going to see his seed, what he have done. Why? Because he, gonna be, he was rose, raised from the dead. And the pleasure of the Lord is going to prosper in his hand. Go ahead and read. He shall see of the travail of his soul uh -huh. and shall be satisfied. Go ahead. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, but he shall bear their iniquities. By his knowledge, by his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many. Because it's all about knowledge, sisters and brothers. Right. 
that he's going to justify many. Go ahead and read. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great. Uh-huh. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Now, here's the great. He's going to divide him a portion with the great. When he raised him out of the grave, who is the great? The father. Yes, sir. And what he going to do? He's going to divide his portion with the strong. Who are the strong? That's you and I if we get this thing right and walk in it. He's letting you know. Go ahead and read. Because he hath poured out his soul into death. He hath poured out his soul unto death. Go ahead and read. And he was numbered with the transgressors. Uh-huh. And he bare the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. Because that's what he is now, the intercessor. He bare the sin of many. All those that put themselves under him and become a part of his covenant and walk in his laws and statutes. He is there interceding for you. We're not perfect. We all going to make mistakes. You'll never get out of this life without sinning at least one or two more times. But you don't do it on purpose. And he's going to intercede to the Father because he is the high priest. Give him a little more time. That flesh they got on there, that is bad. Because that flesh that they're wearing is always trying to kill you. Your body's always trying to kill you. Even Jesus knew that he had to die. If he didn't, the whole creation would be cut off. But when it came down to time, he went and prayed three times. If it is possible, remove this cup from my mouth. Same with sweat and soul, it was just like blood. So when I hear somebody say, I don't mind dying, I just heard a liar. Jesus didn't want to die because this flesh said, I want to live. I want to live. Got to take one of your legs off. Okay, but I want to live. <laughs> so he said, look, he justified many. He said, the scripture is written about him. He said, I come in the volume of the books. Who else can this be but Jesus, sister and brother? That's why I know my Hebrew brothers ain't read this Old Testament. You cannot do nothing, make nobody out here. So when he said, sacrifice and offer thou wouldest not, a body thou hast prepared me, he had to have a body that could die because he couldn't die. He was God. Spirit beings don't die. So now, Let's look at what happened when this body that, that was prepared for him that he took over. Let's see what happened when he died. Let's go into Matthew, the 27th chapter. See, you have to put all this together, sister and brother, so you can get some understanding. People run around telling me, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, and you wouldn't know what a Christian was if he crawled up and bit you on the foot. Because you don't read the book. It's all here. Matthew's 27. And we're going to start at verse 35. And we're going to skip down. 27 and verse 35. 27 and 35. Okay, read. And they crucified him and parted his garments, cast in lots, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Uh-huh. They parted my garments among them. Go ahead. And upon my vesture did they cast lots. He said the prophet spoke that they was going to do that. So they, they uh, bid it for... A good garment he had. And some of them, they just tore up the cloth and, and, and divided among one another. But skip down to verse 46. Verse 46 and read it. Go ahead. And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, uh -huh. Eli, Eli, I my Shabbat the night. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's even written by the prophet, sister and brother, that he was going to fall into that flesh because he didn't want to die. He felt like he had been forsaken. That was the flesh crying. He knew that that had to do. He had to die. Right. And then he cried again. Skip down to fifty, verse fifty, and read it. Jesus, when he had cried again with a loud voice, yielded up the ghost. In other words, he just simply died. Go ahead. And behold, the veil of the temple was rent in twine from the top to the bottom. Uh huh. And the earth did quake, and the rocks rent. Now, why is it then, when Jesus died on the cross, that the veil of the temple ripped? Why? Let's go find out what happened before that veil so you'll understand what went down that night. People read this and just keep reading. Right. But we're going to go into Leviticus, the fourth chapter. Because we're going to see why. We're going to let the Bible tell you why. 
What took place when that happened? Because nothing happened without a reason. Right. Every event has a story to be told behind it, sisters and brothers. And what it's all about is getting knowledge. It's about my servant, by his knowledge, my servant has justified many. If you tap into that knowledge, you're going to be among those that are justified. Yes, sir. Because once you get the knowledge, then you know what to do and what not to do. Now we're going to find out what the veil of the temple ripped. When it ripped, what, had, what happened then? Four and one. Leviticus, the fourth chapter and verse one. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the co commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done and shall do against any of them. Now, you know, as always, if you sin, he only had a way out if you sin in ignorance, sisters and brothers. He ain't gave you no license to sin on purpose. He said, look, if you sin in ignorance, and shall do anything against the law that I didn't want him to do. Go ahead and read. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people. And if the priest is sin like him, go ahead and read. Let him bring for his sin, which he have sinned, a young bullock without blemish unto the Lord for a sin offering. Now you got it out of priest. Just like the people, he got to bring a young bullock. For a sin offering, go ahead and read. He shall bring the bullock into the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before the Lord. Uh-huh. And shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head and kill the bullock before the Lord. Go ahead. And the priest that is anointed shall take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, when he killed this bullock, the priest that is anointed, only the anointed priest, Gonna take the blood of the bullock and go before the tabernacle of the Lord. Go ahead and read. And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood. Uh huh. And sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. Now he gonna go and get the blood of this uh, of the of this bullock or this young bull. He gonna dip his finger in it and he gonna go and sprinkle it seven times before the veil. Why seven times, sisters and brother? Because God gave man seven days. Yes, sir. After the seven day, man will not be man anymore. He's going to be God or whatever else is called, whatever that is called in the lake of fire. Second time, why seven? Because every day man is going to sin against God starting on the first day. Adam and Eve. Fresh off the printing press and disobeyed. <laughs> that was the first day and they've been sinning ever since. Now, that's if the priests are the individual, but what about the whole nation of the whole world. Skip down to verse 13. Verse 13. And go ahead. And if the whole congregation of Israel sin through ignorance, uh -huh. and the thing be hid from the eyes of the assembly, they shall have done somewhat against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which should not be done, uh -huh. and are guilty, when the sin which they have sinned against it is known, then the congregation shall offer a young bullock for the sin and bring him before the tabernacle of the congregation. Now, if, if the whole congregation sin in ignorance, then they're going to have to get a young bullock, and they got to kill him and bring him before the congregation. Skip down to verse 16 and go ahead. And the priest that is anointed shall bring the bullock's blood to the tabernacle of the congregation. Then the priest got to get the blood of that bullock and bring it before the tabernacle of the congregation. Go ahead and read. And the priest shall dip his finger in some of the blood uh -huh. and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord, even before the veil. So now he spoke that as the whole nation. He still do it. Put his finger. This is done on the day of atonement, though, for the whole nation. He go in and sprinkle his, put his finger in the blood and sprinkle it seven times before the Lord. And what will happen when he get through doing that? What, what is that supposed to do? Skip down to verse 20 and let's see. Verse 20, go ahead. And he shall do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. Uh-huh. So shall he do with this. Uh-huh. And the priest shall make an atonement for them and it shall be forgiven them. So that's what he's done then. When you sprinkle that blood before the veil... Then the priest is making atonement for your sin, and it shall be given to you. Yes, yeah, sure. But we got a problem here. Every sin, which was at, which, whether it was every day or, all, or at the end of the year, when he got the blood of the sin offering, 
He had to go before the veil and sprinkle the blood before the veil. So what happened when the veil ripped from top to bottom? What do you sprinkle the blood at? You don't have no place to sprinkle the blood. And if you don't have no place to sprinkle the blood, then why are you going to kill the animal? That means the law of animal sacrifice was complete, was finished, wasn't it? Let's go and confirm it. Let's go back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Back to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Because people don't understand that animal sacrifice was something that the Lord didn't want to put on, uh, put on the table because it didn't do any good. So now he had to take it off. But just like all other priests, sisters, and brothers, he had to have something to offer too, even Melchizedek. Hebrews 10 and verse 11. Hebrews 10 and verse 11. Hebrews 10 and verse 11. Okay, read it. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sin. That's why it had to be replaced. Go ahead and read. And this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Uh-huh. For henceforth expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. Why did he expect that? Because we read in the 110th yeah, chapter of did. Psalm, didn't we? Yep. So the Lord said unto my Lord, Sit down at my right hand until I make thine enemy thy footstool. When did he say that? That is after he had came and died for the sins and rose from the dead. And gone back, now he is sitting down at the right hand of the Father. But David is the one who told you what the Lord said. Yes, sir. And what time was he talking about after the death and resurrection of Jesus? But go ahead and read. For, for by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Uh-huh. But wherefore, the Holy Ghost also is a witness to us, for after that he hath said before, this is the covenant that I will make with them after those days, said the Lord. Now this was the new covenant, sisters and brothers. So he had perfected it. Now what does this really mean? Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18 and go ahead. Now where remission of these is, uh -huh. there's no more offering for sin. There's no more offering for sin. Why? Because when he died, the veil of the temple ripped. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. Go ahead. By a new and living way, uh -huh. which he have consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. That's the new and living way now. You don't go and kill no animal now. You don't do that. What you do on the Passover, you take the bread and the wine. Right. And how do you get under this covenant? By being baptized in the name of Jesus. Not the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Jesus told you to go baptize in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. And they disobeyed him all over the world. Father is the name, is a man that have children. The Son is every man on the planet. He's somebody's son. And the Holy Spirit come in many forms. We can show you this. But Jesus said, I come in my father's name. So if he came in his father's name, then his father's name was Jesus. So. And then he said, and I will send the Holy Ghost in my name. Yep. So if he came in the name of Jesus, then he is called Jesus. Therefore, Paul and Peter baptized and they use the name in the name of Jesus. So if they baptize you and say, I baptize you in the name of the Father and the name of the Son and the name of the Holy Ghost, you're still waiting for them to call the name on you. You better find some out so you can get in this water and get under this covenant. Yes, Think about it, sisters and brothers. So now, he said, look, by a new and living way, which is to say, which he has consecrated from us, for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh. His Go flesh. ahead and read. And having a an high priest over the house of God. Now, he's a high priest now. After all of Melchizedek, he's got his own position back over the house of God. Go ahead and read. Let us draw near with the true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience, and our bodies washed with pure water. So now this high priest here, you can't fool him. Mm -hmm. He looked right in your mind. 
So what you have to do, you have to have your conscience washed with pure water. Yeah, you do. In other words, you got to get that crap and stuff out of your mind <laughs> and stop breaking his law. Right. Because if you don't, he had this written for you. Skip down to verse 26. Verse 26. Go ahead and read. For if we sin willfully, after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. Uh-uh. So if we sin willfully, after you have received the knowledge of the truth, there is no more sacrifices for sin. The animal death ain't going ain't to kill no more animals for you, and Jesus ain't going to die no more for you. Mm -hmm. So what do you have to look forward to? Read it. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries. In other words, all you got to look for is the lake of fire. Mm. People tell me, well, I don't believe in the lake of fire. Yeah. I said, I didn't believe that I could get beat up until the whole school wore me out. <laughs> they educated me. <laughs> These sisters and brothers. So when Jesus died, he terminated the law. Mm -hmm. But if you don't have no knowledge, you'll never understand which one. But now, since you've seen what we have read, then you will understand what Paul is saying here. See, a lot of people, a lot of people misquote Paul, sister and brother. But let's go into Romans, the 10th chapter, and you will understand what Paul is talking about. Romans chapter 10. Romans And we're going to start reading that verse 1. Romans 10 and 1. Okay, read it. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is uh -huh. that they might be saved. Go ahead. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. So that's something. He said, look, I'm, I'm, I'm praying that they be saved because I bear the record. I mean, they have a zeal of God. <laughs> I'm going to tell you something. You can almost get on any streets and go east, west, north, or south. If you go three blocks, you're going to run into seven churches. <laughs> but the problem is they ain't got no knowledge. First thing is to let you know they ain't got no knowledge because they're holding service on the first day of the week, Sunday. Right. Nobody ever asked the question, why is the proclaimed Christian Sabbath day? It's called Sunday. All you have to do is go in the encyclopedia and read on the Sunday. And it will tell you, die is solus, the day of the sun. The day of the sun worshipers. Christian Sabbath day. The Lord said, as his custom was, in Luke the fourth chapter, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath, Sabbath day. Paul's custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath. So when Jesus died, he didn't rise on Sunday. So what he said, they have a lot of zeal, but not according to knowledge. Go ahead and read. Three. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness uh -huh. and going about to establish their own righteousness uh -huh. have not submitted themselves into the righteousness of God. So they being ignorant of God's righteousness, then they go about, go around and come. And, and, and establish their own righteousness. And that's what happens when you don't know God's righteousness. You know what they tell you? Sin is smoking and drinking and dancing. <laughs> smoking ain't good for your health, but it's not sin. Drinking ain't good. Ain't, you know, drinking, well, I ain't going to say it ain't good. <laughs> <laughs> but if drinking was that bad, then Jesus would not have been called a wine bibber, wouldn't he? Right. You know what a wine bibble is called nowadays? A wine head. He drank plenty of wine. Paul told Timothy to drink some wine for your stomach. Right. Noah drank, made, drank so much wine, he got drunk and got naked. <laughs> but he didn't get cut off. So sin is the transgression of the law. But because people don't know that, they had to create some sin. One preacher saying going in the shopping mall and shopping is sin. He probably said that because his wife spent all his money. <laughs> Sin is the transgression of the law. So being that they didn't understand God's righteousness, they went around and committed their own righteousness. The same with Israel too. Yeah. 
Yes, sir. So what did it say here? The next verse. Go ahead and read. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness for everyone to believe. What law did he end it? Sacrifice. Animal sacrifice. Yes, sir. Because when he died on the cross, the veil of the temple ripped from top to bottom. Priest had no how to take the blood. You ain't got no how to take the blood? Then why kill the cow? Right. But then the prophets told you that that was going to happen. Yeah. Let's go into nine, Daniel's the ninth chapter. Daniel's chapter 9. See, all this was told, sisters and brothers. All of it. There is no surprises in the New Testament. Ain't nothing written in there that was, uh, was not already written. But don't nobody read the Bible. Everybody like to discuss it. We're going to debate. How can you debate something you never read? Some people say, well, I don't like to go to Israel of God. They read too many scriptures. Yeah, well, you want me to read one and tell you what I think? I can't tell you too much because sometime I say something 10 minutes ago and you ask me again, I don't forgot what I say. <laughs> so I'm going to read it. That's the only way you're going to know, sisters and brothers. So now, Christ was the end of the law. I'm going to show you where it is. And they even messed that up. Nine, chapter 9, Daniel chapter 9. And we're going to start reading at verse 25. Daniel chapter 9 and verse 25. 9 and 25. Okay, go ahead. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem and to the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks and three score and two weeks. The streets shall be built again, and the wall even in troublous times. Now, the reason they don't understand this is because somebody told you this is talking about the seven-year tribulation. There is no seven-year tribulation. This ain't talking to Antichrist here. This is talking about Jesus, Jerusalem, and the Jews. He says, so from the going forth of the commandment to rebuild and restore Jerusalem, who, get, who gave that? The Persian king out of Xerxes. Yes, sir. And we have a lesson to show you. The 69 weeks that come up to Jesus. That's in, in, when Jesus was anointed. See, when he was born, he wasn't the Messiah or the anointed one. He got anointed at his baptism. But from that time, so uh, up until the Messiah, the prince, shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks, and the streets shall be built again, even in troublous time. Go ahead and read. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. That's when he get here, he's going to be cut off. Go ahead and read. But not for himself. But not for himself. And the people of the prince that shall come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Uh -huh. And the end thereof shall be with the flood. And until the end of the war, desolations are determined. So now, did Jesus die for himself? Mm -mm. He was cut off for our sin. Didn't we read that? Yep. So and then later on, the people of the prince came and destroyed the city. They said, see, this is talking about the, the tribulation. Who are the people of the prince? The Romans, sisters and brothers. Jesus died about what? About uh, uh, at 33. Yeah. And that was in the B.C. In, seven, uh, in A.D., rather. In 70 A.D., Titus came in and destroyed Jerusalem down to the ground. And scattering the Jews that he didn't kill, he scattered them all over the Mediterranean. That is recorded history, sisters and brothers. So he destroyed it down to the ground. And go ahead and read. 27. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Unless Jesus shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. They said, well, see, the Antichrist is going to make a covenant with many. Sisters and brothers, make and confirm are two different words, aren't they? If you're going to make something, that's to bring it in, into existence the first time. But to confirm something is to strength, strengthen something that's already been put on the table. So he's going to confirm the many from one week. Go ahead and read. And in the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and oblations to cease. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifices and oblation to cease. Sisters and brothers, that have a twofold meaning. That's the midst of his ministry. Because Jesus was to teach seven years. He got anointed at 30 years old, keeping the law, because he waited. And then he was killed when he was 33 and a half years old. So three and a half and three and a half is what? Seven years. So in the midst of the week, 
Read that again. He did what? And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Uh huh. And in the midst of the week, he shall call the sacrifice and oblations to cease. How did he do that? By dying. Remember when he died on the cross? Then the veil of the rip, temple ripped from top to bottom. Yeah. That was the end of the sacrifice and oblation, sisters and brothers, for sin. It was over with. Yeah, it was. Nobody pays no attention. But that's enough of that. I'm going to show you the literal, literal part about it. Let's go into Matthew, the 12th chapter, because Jesus is going to tell you about himself. Matthew, chapter 12. I don't know, I forgot to tell my uh, uh, video crew that I wanted to use the three days and the three nights and the one day and the one night. If you guys can pull it up when I read it, put it up there. The picture speaks volume. Matthew, the 12th chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 38. Matthew, chapter 12, and verse 38. 12 and 38. Okay, read. Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we will see a sign from thee. As if we want to see a sign. See, Everybody was looking for the Messiah, or the Christ, or the anointed one. All three words mean the same thing. So they wanted to see, we want a sign from you to show that you are the one, to prove that you are the one. And look what Jesus told these guys. Go ahead and read. But he answered and said unto them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. First thing, he said something that is very prevalent nowadays. An evil and adulterous generation seeking out the sign. In other words, I just can't just teach you the word of God. That ain't good enough. Right. I have to put, slap you in the head and you got to fall down and kick and slob. <laughs> you got to jump up and scream and run to the end of the place and fall over the chair, nursing, giving you smelling sauce and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, they got the Holy Ghost. <laughs> You're looking for this. I'm going to speak in some language that you don't understand and I don't either. That's why the Bible tells you speaking, speaking in tongues are for a sign. Not for the believer, but for the non-believer. So Jesus said an evil, an adulterous generation seeking out the sign, but he's going to give them one sign. Read it. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonas. And there shall no sign be given to it but the sign of the prophet Jonah, go ahead and read. Where Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. That's jo Jonas was three days and three nights in the whale's belly. Go ahead and read. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. In other words, so I'm, I'm going to be in the grave for three days and three nights. Yes, sir. Now, sisters and brothers. Don't you know this man is saying that Jesus is not the Messiah? You know why? Because he said that he died Good Friday. Can you guys put that up? Or did I spring a surprise on you? He died Good Friday, right? See this? If he died Good Friday, he was in there Friday night, Saturday night, and uh-uh, you can't go to Sunday night, right? Nope. Or he's supposed that rose early Easter Sunday morning. <laughs> but if he rose then, he said, Friday night, Saturday night, and in the daytime, Sunday? Wait a minute, that's no day because he, he wasn't there a whole day if he, if he rose, right? So now, in other words, if Jesus died Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning, then he is not the Christ. We're still waiting on him to come the first time. But Jesus said, he's going to be in the grave three days and three nights. Prophecy said, he's going to cause the sacrifices and oblation to cease in the midst of the week, didn't yes, sir. Yeah. So the midst of the week is Wednesday, ain't it? Yes, sir. That's the middle of the week. Now, let's put it up there. Now, so he died, and they put him in the grave Wednesday night, yes, sir. Thursday night, and Friday night. That's three days, ain't it? Yes, sir. Then he was in there Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's, that's three nights, brother. And he was in a Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. That's three days, right? Yep. He rose sundown, just about sundown on the Sabbath day, sisters and brothers. 
So when the women got there early in the morning, <laughs> according to St. John, the 20th chapter, while it was yet dark, he was gone. You know how he was, why he was gone? Because he had to rise on the Sabbath day. You know why? Because God gave man seven days. At the end of the seventh day, which is the seven thousand years since the creation of Adam, it's over with. It wasn't no accident that Jesus rose on the Sabbath day. Because that's the end of God's work. And he said he completed his work in seven days. So now, on the first day of the week, he is not rising. He is already risen. And when the woman got, saw him in the garden and re recognized who he was, she said, Master, he said, touch me not. Right. For I am not a sinner to my father. You know why he told her not to touch him? Because the Lord said in prophecy, when you reap your harvest, Take a sheaf of the first fruit and wave it before God to be accepted. I don't want you to eat parched corn or bread or nothing until it has been accepted. And he said, you shall wave it tomorrow after the Sabbath day. What's tomorrow after the Sabbath day? Sunday. So early Sunday morning. Easter Sunday morning. When you go down to have sunrise service, I have some news for you. You're actually watching the sunrise because Jesus rose Saturday. And nobody, and nobody pays any attention that is why it's called Sunday. So when it comes to the Passover, sisters and brothers, in order for you to understand the Passover, you have to know what Jesus is about. You have to understand the importance of his blood. You have to understand sin offering. So because of the blood of Jesus, which that lamb down in Egypt represents, we all have a second shot at immortality. That is so simple, ain't it? So we're going to go and do something here because when we have this Passover, I want to say any male that is not circumcised, be it he is Israelite or a stranger, that's a non-Israelite, do not partake of the bread and wine. Let me show you why. Let's go into Exodus, the 12th chapter. And you got one more place after this. Exodus, the 12th chapter. People tell me, well, you shouldn't be taken if you're not baptized. I don't say nothing but what's written in the book, okay? <laughs> now, if I'm on error, I'm on error on the right side. I can stand before God says, Lord, I didn't see it in there where you say you had to be baptized. But I know one thing, if you're not baptized, you're not under the covenant. And if you ain't under the covenant, sorry, nada. Exodus 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 43. That's after the Lord had passed over the houses that had the blood on them, and they'd have been, and they've come out of Egypt, and they're in the wilderness now. Now the Lord is going to lay down the ordinance of the Passover. 12 and 43. 12 and 43. Okay, go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, uh huh. This is the ordinance of the Passover. This is the ordinance of the Passover. Go ahead. There shall no stranger eat thereof. Uh-huh. But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, then shall he eat thereof. Every man's servant. Because if you're bought with money, you're part of the household. So you, then you're going to circumcise, and he shall eat thereof. But skip right. Uh, what verse is that? That was in the 44. Go ahead. A foreigner 
And a hired servant should not eat thereof. A foreign and a hired servant. That's somebody that don't know what's going on. Right. You're not to eat thereof. But if you decide to do it, you find out this is the condition. Skip down to verse 48. Verse 48 and read it. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee. Uh-huh. And will keep the Passover to the Lord. That's when a non-Israelite shall sojourn with you. And he's going to keep the Passover of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Let all his males be circumcised. Let all of his males be circumcised. Go ahead and read. And then let him come near and keep it. And then let him come near. Go ahead. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. Uh-huh. For no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. How absolute is no, sister and brother? Absolute. That include Israel and the stranger. That covers all of the sons of Adam, don't it? Yes, sir. For no uncircumcised stranger shall eat thereof. Go ahead and read. One law shall be to him that is homeborn. One law shall be the boy. And Go ahead. <laughs> and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. And to George that sojourneth among me. In other words, sisters and brothers, why should I have to why should I have to get circumcised to get salvation and George don't have to get circumcised? That ain't fair, is it? No. In other words, one law. One law. Because after the Passover, sisters and brothers, came the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Why did the Feast of Unleavened Bread come after this? Because unleavened means sin free. Through the blood, your sins are purged. That's why Passover cannot be on the same night as the Feast of Unleavened Bread. It has to be before. Now let's go to one last place. 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. 1 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. And we're going to read one verse. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 7. Okay, read it. Purge out therefore the old leaven. Purge out, uh, purge, I'm going to paraphrase, okay? You can, you can storm it later. Purge out now the old sin, go ahead. That ye may be a new lump. That you might be a new lump, go ahead. As ye are unleavened. As you are unleavened, that's sin free, go ahead. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. Now, who is the Passover? That's why I tell them, brothers, if you ain't circumcised, you cannot partake of Jesus because he's the Passover. So if you got any male in here that's not, that's not circumcised, do not, I repeat, do not go up there and take this bread and wine because all you're doing is bringing a curse on yourself. Y'all understand? So now, we're going to uh, get the announcements, and then we're going to close out. Okay? So I thank you for tolerating me this, with me all this time.